Hello, this video will be covering homogeneity of variance covariance matrix for the statistics class for Dr. Jennifer Ripley. And for this one, we what's happening here is we are essentially covering the concept of homogeneity applied to many variables. If you have not yet watched the general homogeneity of variance or hom homoscedasticity ver uh, video lecture yet, you should watch that one first because this one builds on that concept. Okay, so homogeneity of variance covariance matrices. Um, when we get to the concept of a MANOVA, this is where this concept is covered, this assumption particularly applies to MANOVA in my class. But this is the idea. When you have multiple variables, so here we have a matrix you're looking at, it has five variables, one, two, three, four, five, okay. So when doing analysis with five dependent variables, let's say, or you know, five continuous variables together, what you want is you want a variance for each, right, to be a nice normal spread and a good equal variance between variable one, two, three, four, and five, right? They should all have similar variance. And omega is the Greek letter that's typically used for variance. But there's also this thing called covariance. Covariance is how does variable one and variable two vary together? Do they work together at kind of similar levels of varying across each level, right? Across from the low numbers to the high numbers, that sort of thing. Um, or, or is their covariance not the same, right? And you're getting fans of data, not nice blimps of data um, when you're looking at two variables together. So you have covariance and then you have covariance with every. So if you have five of them, you have a lot of covariances, right? Um, and this on the bottom would just be a, a duplicate of that data. Um, so this is one with two and one with three and one with four and one with five. So you have all these covariances and the variances and you want all of these things to be homogenous, you don't want a lot of heterogeneity across all the variances and the covariances. It does get kind of complex, but essentially if you can understand that, okay, we're applying the concept of homogeneity to many variables and that it's not just like the three to five, or it's like in this one, and the five variances need to be equal to each other, it's that they also cross with each other, right? The one and the two and the one and the three need to be equal to each other as well across this entire matrix of data. And if you've ever taken matrix algebra, that is actually how this is calculated, is using matrix algebra principles. If you haven't taken matrix algebra, no worries. We won't be doing that in this class. The computer will do those things for us. So how do you detect whether you have a problem with homogeneity of variance covariance matrix? You might be worried that, wow, you know, this is going to be probably pretty complex and difficult because, wow, look at all those covariances and variances and they all need to be the same. Are we going to be looking at like 40 analyses or something? I have very good news for you. Um, you don't do it by scatter plots, thank God, and you don't do it on Levine's test thankfully, um, you have something called boxes M that, that SPSS will give us, and it'll give us a statistic. And it's particularly good for small sample sizes. It tends to be a little strict for large sample sizes, and so if you have a large sample and your boxes M ends up being significant, because remember, in assumptions land, st significance is sad, right? You don't want significance in assumptions land. Um, and so if you get a boxes M that is significant in your analysis, but you have a large sample, you might just report it and just say, because I have a large sample, I'm going to continue um, on my study and not worry too much about it. But if you have a small sample of only maybe 60 or 90 participants or something, and your boxes M is significant, what you may have to do is break apart your data analysis and not put all of those variables together or drop off one or two variables that are causing the problem. Okay, so I just wanted to show you what it looks like, and we'll be doing this in our SPSS lab for class. 
too. But um, remember, significant is sad. So if you look here at this one, we've got the boxes M test right there. And it gives us a number, right? That doesn't mean much to you. And it's a type of F test on that variance covariance matrix. And you can even see equality of the covariance matrices. Oh, OK. We want equality, right? We want homogeneity. We want them to be equal. We don't want them to be different, right? Are they different? Oh, no. And this one, they are significance right there. Sig is 0 0.009. Too bad, right? So um, you report it. There are various things you can do. One of the things you can do in MANOVA that we'll cover when we get there is use a, a, an alternative statistic that SPSS is going to give you anyway. So it's not hard to do. So, um, But this is one of the things to be aware of that will be tested, um, particularly in MANOVA in my class. So very good.